Why doesn't stainless steel rust? Hey, engineering lovers, have you ever stopped to think about why some pots, cutlery, or even building structures exposed to rain don't rust like an ordinary nail? The answer lies in a revolutionary material, stainless steel. Behind this resistance, there's a precise combination of chemical elements, a phenomenon called passivation, and a story of almost accidental discovery. But first, what exactly is stainless steel? Basically, stainless steel is a metal alloy derived from iron with a key ingredient, chromium. While regular steel contains mainly iron and carbon, stainless steel requires at least 10.5% chromium in its composition, in addition to other elements such as nickel, molybdenum or titanium. This formula isn't random because it was chromium that solved one of humanity's biggest problems, corrosion. But how was it discovered? The story begins at the start of the 20th century in Sheffield, England. In 1913, the metallurgist Harry Bradley was researching wear-resistant alloys for gun barrels. During tests, he noticed that a sample with 12.8% chromium did not oxidize after being exposed to corrosive agents. Harry realized that this alloy had potential not for weapons, but for cutlery. After all, knives and forks were constantly victims of rust. In 1915, he patented the alloy, named stainless steel. But what happens at the chemical level? The secret lies in the formation of an invisible protective film. When the chromium presenting the steel comes into contact with the oxygen in the air, a spontaneous reaction occurs, as shown in the formula on the screen. The result is an ultra-thin layer of about 3 to 5 nanometers of chromium-3 oxide adhered to the surface of the metal. This film is inert, insoluble in water, and crucially, self-healing. That's because if it gets scratched or damaged, the underlying chromium immediately reacts with oxygen, regenerating the barrier again. And this invisible layer, which isolates the iron from moisture and oxygen, prevents the classic oxidation reaction, as we can see on the screen. Where? This last compound is common rust, iron, III hydroxide, which ends up being porous and flakes off, exposing new layers to corrosive attack. Now, if stainless steel is a symbol of strength and innovation, having a career with those same characteristics is the dream of many people. But how is stainless steel produced? The process starts in electric or basic oxygen furnaces, where iron, pig iron, steel scrap and alloys are melted. At approximately 1600 degrees Celsius, the carbon content is reduced and elements like chromium and nickel are added. The critical step is vacuum decarburization, which removes dissolved gases to prevent the material from becoming brittle. Next, the alloy is solidified into ingots or hot and cold rolled plates and heat treated to adjust mechanical properties. Finally, passivation with nitric acid reinforces the chromium oxide layer. However, besides chromium, other components are essential. Nickel stabilizes the austenitic crystal structure, improving ductility and resistance to acids, with a percentage of 8% to 10%, as in American Iron and Steel Institute 304 Steel. Adding molybdenum boosts resistance to chlorides like seawater by forming complex oxides, such as molybdenum trioxide, with a percentage of 2% to 3% as in American Iron and Steel Institute 316 steel when there is excess carbon, chromium carbides are formed, reducing the free chromium available for passivation. Now, with the use of stabilizing elements, such as titanium and niobium, in steels like American Iron and Steel Institute 321, they bind the carbon, preventing the precipitation of carbides. But you should know that even stainless steel can rust because it has its limits. In environments with concentrated chlorides, such as saltwater pools or coastal regions, chloride ions can penetrate the chromium oxide film and locally break down the passivation, causing what we call pitting corrosion or localized corrosion. Or, if welded incorrectly, the heat can form chromium carbides at the grain boundaries depleting the local chromium and leading to intergranular corrosion. 
That's why choosing the right alloy is vital. While American Iron and Steel Institute 304 stainless steel is common in household utensils, American Iron and Steel Institute 316 is used in offshore platforms. But what is the legacy of this invention? From surgical scalpels to nuclear reactors, stainless steel has revolutionized critical sectors. In medicine, its biocompatibility, thanks to passivation, allows for safe implants. In the food industry, it prevents contamination from corrosion. In power plants, it withstands steam and high pressures. And even art benefits from it. Where the atrium of the Chrysler building in New York has been shining for 90 years with stainless steel cladding. Today, research focuses on superalloys like duplex or austenitic ferritic steel, which combine high mechanical strength and durability in extreme environments. But the principle remains the same, where a microscopic oxide barrier, the result of the genius of chemistry and metallurgy, transforms ordinary iron into a material that. If you've made it this far and enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, leave your like and turn on the notification bell. And if you find our content interesting, consider becoming a member to help us keep producing content here on the platform and be remembered in our videos. Did you know what you were doing? Stainless steel has its rust resistant properties. Do you have any stainless steel objects there? Leave it here in the comments because I want to know. On the side, you'll find two interesting videos you should watch to expand your knowledge and curiosity. If you'd like to support us, please like, subscribe, turn on notifications and consider joining the channel. That's it. Engineering enthusiasts, a big hug and I'll see you in the next video.